remember they're changing my voice. In this video, I'm going to go through some key reasons why I'm the top martial artist and how Isaiah shows that I'm right. I'm going to put in some Psalms and later on we're going to get into some scriptures, some Proverbs about sense and what is sense and what is the Spirit of God and what isn't and why um, the Spirit of God is a consuming fire is one way it, it has been described. All right, so Isaiah 5, 16. The Lord Almighty will be exalted by his justice and the Holy God will be proved holy by his righteous acts. So we just went through the John uh, book, the book of John. Okay, remember they're changing my voice. In this video, I'm going to go over some Isaiah scriptures that prove that I'm the top martial artist because of principle, okay, and characteristics that even though they change my voice, you can tell by what I'm doing, okay, and their failure to come anywhere near close to me, that God has set me apart as anointed as the last leader ever, okay? We're going to connect character, which is what martial arts are supposed to be about, to righteousness and justice. Not the racist LGBT clown stuff we see, white supremacy, token minority garbage that people call martial arts these days, but what is actually divine monotheistic martial arts, what are known as Royal African Falcon martial arts when I say it. When other people say it, they're referring to some kind of pagan conception of horrors, some kind of garbage, okay? Eventually in this series, I'm going to get into some Psalms, and I'm also going to get into some Proverbs about sense. Okay, but we're going to start with Isaiah. Isaiah 5, 16. But the Lord Almighty will be exalted by his justice, and the Holy God will be proved holy by his righteous acts. So what is right and just exalts someone. In the book of John and elsewhere in the Bible, it said the Son of Man must be lifted up, like Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness in the desert, okay, rather, or whichever one it was. Okay, the Son of Man must be exalted. How? Well, Isaiah, who predicted Jesus would come, especially in Isaiah 16, right? He will seek justice and righteousness, right? He will seek and speed the cause of justice and righteousness, okay? And as Isaiah 28, it says, make justice and righteousness the measuring line and plume line. There's more than one way to interpret it, and that's what it's saying in its sum total, okay, on, on that part of the uh, verse. Okay, so character and universal pinpointing moral precision and focus moral intensity. So if you're going to measure righteousness, the righteous intensity of God surpasses everything, right? And he who draws on it and is more intensely righteous than anyone else who obeys God through him is the most righteous man on earth. So I'm the most righteous. And as no one is obeying God through me, no one else is righteous, but my parents are blameless because they bore the fruit of me. But they're not obeying me. Okay, so it's important to make that distinction. They're still going to go to heaven, but they're, they're not so much, they're in the residual spirit of righteousness and not in the direct spirit of righteousness, if that makes sense. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. Remember, they're changing my voice, trying to make me sound like some nerd, some Jew, some white guy, I don't appreciate it, some token minority, don't like it. Anyway, Isaiah 5.25, therefore the Lord's anger burns. It specifically burns. Write that down, Isaiah 5.25. Therefore the Lord's anger burns. Elsewhere in the Bible, it might be Hebrews or something, it says God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. Okay, why? We're going to get into that. Isaiah 5.25, therefore the Lord's anger burns against his people. His hand is raised and he strikes them down. The mountains shake and the dead bodies are like refuse, which means waste, refuse in the streets. If for all this his anger is not turned away, his hand is still upraised, they are like refuse because they refuse to do what God wants. They, they refuse to be morally precise. In, um, in Proverbs or Psalms, okay, it says that a woman who rejects good sense is like a gold ring in a pig's snout, right? Her spirit is a dirty, filthy, demon pig spirit, okay? So they reject the good sense of the divine order. They insist on putting their filthy bloodlines above me in the minds of people. So they're filthy-minded, filthy souls. They're filthy. It doesn't matter if they take 100 showers a day. They're filthy, disgusting, despicable, contemptible, inspiring contempt, foolish and contemptible, nerd and social club outfit type of filth, okay? 
and all who follow them are in their spirit. They reject good sense. So if a, a female who's seen as having less sense than a man, because when you think about martial arts, historically men were better at it because they had brain function that lined up with it more and has to do with sense. Okay, if a female who rejects good sense is like a gold ring in a, in a pig's snout, okay, and a beautiful woman, then how much more a hygienic guy who rejects good sense? Okay, to him who much is given, much is expected, he's supposed to have more sense than the woman. Why doesn't he? He's just a bitch, right? Anyway, Isaiah 9, 12. Aramaeans from the east and Philistine and the Philistines from the west have devoured Israel with open mouth. They have devoured them, right? The, the ancient serpent, the devil. The serpent devours things. The dragon devours things. The roaring lion in, uh, is like a Second Peter 5, 8 or something. The, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, paraphrasing. The devil's devouring, right? How? Spiritually devouring, okay? It, you know, I describe it like this. You know, it's like a phone. If somebody is talking to you on the phone and they cut off the phone line that you're on and the person is still talking, is that spirit devoured? No. Okay, so my spirit is still there. It's just you don't hear the spirit as much. But if you look carefully, it's still there. You see what I'm saying? They couldn't get to my soul and my spirit. But with other people, because they're doing what is wrong, their spirit is devoured. Okay, it wasn't the best example, but I'm pretty sure you see what I'm getting at. Any questions, put in the comments. Aramaeans from the east and the Philistines from the west have devoured Israel with open mouth. If for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Okay, this is the hand of God. Not some white guy acting bad. Not some racist Jew oppressing people, thinking that he looks good while he's doing it. It's fucking retarded. Not some LGBT person twisting things and putting rainbow flags on their churches. This is the hand of the Royal African Falcon top martial arts, the most serious type of person that ever lived, okay? And it's the spirit in him, which is God, okay? So he is the hand of God, and, and God's hand is in him, right? Kind of semantics. And there's more than one application, uh, you know, under, uh, way to explain it. But the people have not returned to him who struck them, nor have they sought the Lord Almighty. So the Lord will cut off from Israel both head and tail, both palm branch and reed in a single day. The elders and dignitaries are the head and the prophets who teach lies are the tail. Those who guide this people mislead them and those who are guided by are led astray. In John, there is an angel at the head and one at the foot of Jesus' burial place. Also, Satan leads um, the world astray. This shows us that some key servants of Satan are elders which is a play on words for El Reds and El Doors, right? El, the pagan Canaanite deity, very adverse to God. And dignitaries ends in the word Ares, which is, uh, you know, Mars, right? Is the, um, you know, it's a, a god of war in pagan culture. And prophets, right? Pro-pets, right? And, and, and prophets and making a profit. So they're leading them astray so they can make financial gain. You can't serve both God and money, what have you. Surely wickedness burns like a fire. Okay, again, Isaiah 9, 12 says, Surely wickedness burns like a fire. When Isaiah 5, 25 says, Therefore the Lord's anger burns, right? So what, what has happened here? God is everywhere, and if you don't come into his spirit and you're not right with him, your soul is being burned inside of you. And after you're gone, you won't have the flesh to distract you, and it's intense suffering forever. Okay, and that, that is justice. When you think about how should this thing play out? That's how it should play out. And a lot of Satanists try to confuse you about this. They think that, you know, there is no consequences when you die or something. I don't know what exactly is their argument, but I do know they're trying to confuse you about what is to the agnostic, the logical assumption, what is to the man of God, the no brain, just conclusion. Surely wickedness burns like a fire. It consumes briars and thorns. It sets the forest thickets ablaze. So it rolls upward in a column of smoke. By the wrath of the Lord Almighty, the land will be scorched and the people will be fueled for the fire. They will not spare one another. On the right, they will devour it, but still be hungry. On the left, they will eat, but not be satisfied. Each will feed on the flesh of their offspring. Each will feed on the flesh of their offspring. So even if you were to argue that Isaiah 9 is referring to a specific point in history that has passed, this is the blueprint. When you're not right with God, you feed on the flesh of your offspring. Your offspring come out as sniveling fucking worms. You might even sink to the level of hooking them to a machine, trying to improve their genes or whatever the fuck you call it, transhumanism, right? They come off as disgusting flesh filth, and you're sending them to hell. So they're feeding on the flesh and on the spirit of their offspring. 
Okay, again, it says each will feed on the flesh of their own offspring. Manasseh will feed on Ephraim and Ephraim on Manasseh. Together they will turn against Judah. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and do the first part of 10 so we can keep this moving. I was going to end it there, but let's just do the first part of 10. Okay, as Isaiah 10. Woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees to deprive the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people. Who's more oppressed in popular culture than the black man? So when you, the most righteous person is a black person, and your system denies him his right to lead your students and you know the masters, whatever you want to call them, okay, then you're depriving the, the righteous and the poor of their rights, right? My rightful place at the same time. So other martial artists and their systems are ruled out. Whether you do something unwittingly or not, if you unwittingly put your hand in a fire, does it not get burned? That is nature's way. If you unwittingly do something, you will still suffer the consequences. Okay, it's just to what degree. So we talk about spiritual justice, you know, whether, how, how conscious you were, right? Too much is, him who much is given, much is uh, expected. That will factor in. But there's still consequences, including being, you and your offspring being cut off from God. Okay. Um, making widows their prey and robbing the fathers. What does it mean to make widows their prey? This is what they're doing now, right? With the inflation and all this, they're causing people to be desperate and turn to them and they take advantage of them, especially sexually. So these people, you know, would cause um, the husbands of women to be killed, like King David did, and I think it was Bathsheba or something, okay? And uh, he took the woman from the guy, that I believe it was a Hittite, he sent to battle to die. So he took advantage of her because he wanted her, and she's a widow. So these people set the stage for these things to occur, and it's been going on all throughout history. It wasn't just the Jews, what have you. What will you do on the way on the day, excuse me, what will we do on the day of reckoning when disaster comes from afar? Horus, uh, in the, you know, is said to come from afar. What did the pagans do? So basically a bunch of pagans or betas, you know, you can tell by how they depicted Horus later on as some kind of shorter, kind of beta-shaped guy, kind of nerd-shaped guy, you know. And they said, you know, he's the one who comes from afar because they superimposed it on the Royal African Falcon martial art order, okay? And even the Bible, you know, when Joseph was around, the Pharaoh during that time, was said to be right with God. So it, it's the idea of in Egypt long ago, there was African martial artists who were right with God. The Bible acknowledges it. That's why also in Genesis 41, 45, Joseph is around to marry Asana, the daughter of Potiphar, the priestess of An, which is Ra, and Horus is said to be the son of Ra, which is superimposed on Horus, uh, on the top, excuse me, on the, on the Royal African Falcon top martial artist, the alpha of all mankind, the son of God, and God is symbolized by the son, and so is his son. The S-U-N symbolizes the S-O-N, and so it is in Malachi 4 and Psalm 19. Okay, so, again, horse is said to come from afar, and whose true idea is the Son of God? The pagan conception is a ruse and a trap. To whom will you run for help? Where will you leave your riches? Again, in Matthew uh, 5, Jesus says to put riches in heaven and not to uh, gather worldly riches, because you can't take them with you, and the parable of the rich fool and what have you. Nothing will remain but to cringe among the captives or fall among the slain. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. They fume the air and it's causing me to have almost like a lisp. Okay? They're fucking immature. Okay? Not only are you people in rebellion against God, you are obeying people who are sick, immature, pedo spirit trash. There's no excuse for it. The penalty will be extreme. Even if you don't know what you're doing in terms of defying God, you certainly know you're serving horrible fucking people. And many of you are breeding children that will serve horrible people and the penalty will be extreme for your extreme betrayal. God's judgment on Assyria. Again, this is a formula, right? Why did he judge them this way? It was a fair judgment in all cases like this, okay? Woe to the Assyrian, the rod of my anger, in whose, whose hand is the club of my wrath. Okay, notice he's talking about rods and clubs. These are martial art weapons, it's like the staff. The rod is a variation of the staff, which is a martial art weapon. And the club is ob obviously a variation of several martial art weapons and war weapons in general, axes and, and short sticks and so on and so forth. I send him against a godless nation. I dispatch him against the people who anger me to seize loot and, to sn and snatch plunder and to trample them down like mud in the streets. But this is not what he intends. This is not what he has in mind. His purpose is to destroy to put an end to many nations. He wants to assimilate them into his evil spirit and not to force them to turn to God. Okay, so God wanted him to kick their ass in terms of say, this is what happens when you don't serve God. But he's like, this is what happens when you don't bow to me and my idols, right? He's